Hi everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and in this series of videos I'm going to show you how to author drag and drop and matching activities using Polypad inside of Activity Builder. So here I am at teacher.desmos.com. I'm going to go to my custom activities and create a new activity. And I'll just call this drag and drop and make my new activity. Uh, so here is where I can add screens to the activities. I'm going to go uh, on screen one and under the components on the left, I'm going to click on polypad and I'm going to add a full screen polypad to this screen. Again, I'm using polypad inside of Activity Builder here. Everything I'm doing would work exactly the same at polypad.amplify.com. So I could go here, I can click on launch polypad, and here I get a blank starting polypad as well. Again, I'm going to do it inside of Activity Builder, but everything that I'm showing you would work the same on the standalone polypad as well. Okay, so here is my full screen polypad, and I want to make an activity where I have four polygons at the top, and I want students to drag and drop the names of those shapes to match the polygons that they see. So that's the vision of the activity. Let me uh, get going here. So let's do, maybe we'll do a triangle, a pentagon, a hexagon, and we'll do an octagon. Maybe I'll mix up the orders a little bit, uh, just so it's not all in the same order. Uh, I want to make these about the same size. So under the More Tools menu, I can scale these up a little bit. So I'll scale that to 1.5 and do the same with the triangle just to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe 2.3 looks good. So there are my shapes. Maybe I'll scale this one up a bit as well. All right, so there are the four shapes that I have. Uh, I want them all to be lined up. So I'm going to turn on the grid background, and by doing that, they can snap to the bottom. Uh, the bottoms of the polygons can snap to one of the lines of the grid. And so the next thing I'm going to do is add a drop zone where students are going to drag in the name of the shape that they see. So uh, the first thing I need to do is on the gear here, uh, I'm going to click on the gear, and that allows me to enter uh, the authoring mode inside of, of Polypad. If I go to the standalone Polypad, the only thing that looks a little bit different is instead of a gear, it's a, it's a file tab. So this file tab allows me to go in and out of authoring mode. Uh, it's the exact same in Activity Builder, it's just this gear instead. All right, so I'm going to turn on authoring mode, and I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the tile tab. And notice when I do that, at the bottom here, there's a new section of tiles called authoring tools. If I leave authoring mode for a moment and I go back to the tile menu, you can see the authoring tools section is not there anymore. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into authoring mode, go back to the tile tab, and under authoring mode, there's this tile called a drop zone. And a drop zone is where students are going to drag and drop the name of the shape. So I need uh, four drop zones. Maybe I'll, I'll change the size a bit so it can um, just be large enough for like a word. Uh, so let me, I'm going to use the C button on my keyboard to copy that drop zone and move it over here. And the C button again. So now I have four of those drop zones. Uh, I might want to arrange these shapes a little bit so they're right above the drop zone. You can see how now it's like snapping to the grid. And actually, I don't want that. I want it to be right in the middle of the drop zone. So I'm going to turn off the grid for a moment and just sort of place those right above the drop zone. And I'll show you another way I can make sure they are all aligned at the same height on the screen. When I'm here inside of authoring mode, uh, and I go to the More Tools menu under Authoring, I can see the position of this tile. It's 8.4 and 3.5. And when I go to the other ones, I can see that's 3.3. So I'll make that 3.5. And I'll make this one that it was 3.5. And this one is at 3.5 as well. So now I'm, I can see that they are all at the same height on the screen. OK, so those are the shapes. And now I'm going to add a text box for the names of the shapes. So uh, I'm going to click on the text box at the bottom. 
and I'll click and I will type Pentagon. There we go. So there is uh, the word Pentagon that students would drag into that shape. Now we have a lot of ways to format a text box. So first I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and uh, I can add a, a fill and a stroke and a text color into the text, into the text box. So I'm gonna fill it with like a light gray. That, oh, that was the text. Notice I still had it on text. So let me go the text back to black. I'm gonna fill it with a gray. That, that gray I find is too dark uh, for what I'm trying to do here. So I'm gonna to go to our sliders and I know there's a gray I like that's 211 all the way on the RGB value. So there's two. So there's a gray. There we go, that, that looks nice. I'm going to add an outline around the text box. So the stroke, I will just do a, a thin stroke uh, of black. So there's that stroke. And I want to round the corners a little bit just to just to give it a little, uh, make it make it stand out a little bit more. So under, um, under the tile options of this text box, I'm gonna add a little bit of a corner radius. There we go, Pentagon. I can even add a drop shadow if I want, just to give it a little more of like a 3D effect. You can see that adds a, adds a little bit of a drop shadow. Okay, so now I'm gonna go out of authoring mode. And I notice though, when, when I click on this text box, I can rotate it, uh, I can change the size of it. I don't want students to do that. I can do bold and underline, all these things. I don't actually want students to be able to do that. So I'm gonna go back into authoring mode. There's a keyboard shortcut to go in and out of authoring mode. So I'm gonna do command shift A. You'll see that brings me into authoring mode. And under um, interactivity, uh, I actually, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go, let me close this. The first thing that I wanna do on the text box is make it so students are not able to edit the text box. So I'm gonna turn off this toggle. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the show handle toggle so they can't change the size of it. And I'm gonna change it so they are not able to rotate the text box. I'm still in authoring mode, so I see all of those options still, but when I go out of authoring mode, command shift A, now you can see that a bunch of the handles are gone, but I can still do bold, italics, underline, copy, delete, and so on. So those things I wanna change. So I'll go back into authoring mode, Command Shift A. The first thing I'm gonna do is change this text box to cannot copy or delete. So that will get rid of the copy and delete options. There we go. Uh, but to turn off the bold, italics, underline, I need to go to action visibility. And these are the, are, the, are the things that are appearing in the action bar. So I'm gonna uncheck all of those. There we go. Leave authoring mode. And now when I click on the text box, I have all those options are gone. I can just move it around. I'm trying to double click to edit the text and I can't. Uh, great, so that, that looks good. And now I'm gonna take this text box and copy it uh, so I can make octagon, triangle, and hexagon. So I'll go back into authoring mode, Command Shift A, use the C button on my keyboard to make a copy. And because I'm still in authoring mode, I am able to change the text. So octagon, and this will be triangle, and this will be hexagon. Oops, if I could capital H, hexagon. All right, now, because I'm in authoring mode, I can change the size of these a little bit. So they're all that same size. The other option is if I want them to be the same width, which I think I actually might like a little bit better, make all of these the same width. All right, so let's see if I can uh, go into authoring, whoops, all right, um, and get these all to be the same width. There we go. And would be the same. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this over. I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna take this one, make it a little bit wider. But instead of the auto height uh, layout, I'm gonna make it a fixed layout. And what fixed layout is gonna do is put the text in the center of that. See now the text is always in the center, and I can change the height of it. So that will make it so when I take this one again, this is in the fixed height. 
Let me just show that again. That was under layout. It's under fixed. So now when I take this one and copy it a bunch of times, I know they will always be, all of those copies will be the same size. And when I change the text, the text is going to stay in the center of the text box. So that's an easier way to get them all the same size and the text is centered. Cool. All right, now I leave authoring mode and I have these exactly the way I want them. I can move them around and put them at the bottom here, something like this. The final thing I want to show in this first video uh, is how to make it so the, the words go to the center of the drop zone and you can only have one word in each of the drop zones. So here, notice if I drag this in, it'll it'll sort of stay in and out of the drop zone, and I could put two words in the same drop zone. That's not great. So I'm going to go back into authoring mode. I'm going to select all four of these drop zones by holding down the shift key on my keyboard. All right. And then under layout, I'm going to change this from none to center. That will make it so the, the tile automatically gets put in the center of the drop zone. And on each of these drop zones, ooh, let me close that. I'm going to add a, uh, a tile limit, which is under the tile option section, a tile limit of one. There we go. OK, so now when I click on this, you can see that, oh, let's put it in the right one. As soon as I let go, it snaps into the middle of that drop zone. And then uh, when I try to put the octagon inside of the one that already had the hexagon in it, it kicks out the hexagon because I'd set a tile limit of one. So if I were to do something like this and I drop it in here, it's going to kick out the pentagon. All right. Now, uh, this is just the first, the first video in this series. The next video in the series, I'm going to show you how you can author this so instead of when I let go, when the octagon gets kicked above it, instead it'll get sent back to its starting position. So if I had the octagon here and I let go of the triangle, the triangle tile would actually go back here because this drop zone already had a tile in it. So this is just like start one of the process uh, or step one of the process. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to um, make it so tile can only live in a drop zone. So if you try to put two in one drop zone, one will be kicked out. I'll put the link to that video in, in the comments. Um, so come, come check that one out as well. Thanks very much.